In this video, we're going to look at a, another method um, of solving a system of linear equations. Um, so we already saw uh, the first method, I don't, I don't doesn't really have a name, but it's when you turn both of the equations into slope-intercept form, and then you equate the two um, right-hand sides and solve for x. Um, the second one is a more general version of that called substitution. So you solve for one variable and then um, plug it into the other equation and solve for the remaining variable. Um, this one is called the elimination method. It's going to be easier to generalize to more variables, which is something that we're going to want to do. Um, so I'm going to go through an example where we use this method. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about what the method actually did. Um, so we have, we want to solve the system of equations. So x minus y equals 5, 2x minus 5y equals 4. So what we're going to do is eliminate, hence the name. So we want to eliminate one variable uh, in one equation so that we can solve for the other variable. Um, so how we're going to do that is we're going to add or subtract, okay, whatever you prefer, uh, a multiple of another equation. So here we're assuming that they, we we're looking for a solution. Um, so we think that they, uh, the equations are true. So for instance, um, I'm going to take equation 1. Okay, so let's call this 1 and this 2. So if I take equation 1, okay, and I times it by, um, let's say, negative 2. What that's going to give me, I times the entire equation by negative 2. Okay, so that's going to tell me that negative 2x plus 2y should be equal to negative 10. Okay, so this and this are equal. So the two sides are equal. So what you can think of is now take equation 2, okay, and add negative 10 to both sides. Okay, but in different ways. So what I'm going to do, so equation 2 looks like 2x minus 5y equals 4. So on one side, I'm going to add negative 10, so the side with the number. But on the other side, I'm going to add what negative 10 equals in terms of x and y. Okay, so that's this part here, the negative 2x plus 2y, this is equal to negative 10. So essentially, I'm adding negative 10 to both sides. But you could also view this as doing equation 2 plus negative 2 of equation 1. Okay, so essentially I added that equation. So when I do this, um, 2x minus 2x is 0x's. Negative 5y plus 2y is negative 3y. And 4 plus negative 10 is negative 6. So I get the new equation 3y equals negative 6. Okay, this is what I'm going to call new equation 2. So I've changed equation 2 to be that. This is equivalent to what the original equation was or what the original system was because I added the same number to both sides. Okay, I just did it in a weird way. So our system becomes, so we still keep equation 1 which was x minus y equals 5, but now I have negative 3y equals negative 6. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is something that we've done before, is I'm going to take equation 2, um, and I'm going to divide by negative 3. Okay, this is again going to change equation 2, so my new system is x minus y equals 5, and then y equals 2. Now, um, for the, la the next step, I'm going to do equation 1 plus equation 2. Okay, and what you should think of is adding 2 to both sides. Okay, 
okay? But on the side with the numbers, I add 2, and on the other side, I actually add y, which is equal to 2. Okay, so I'm going to have x minus y equals 5, and I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Okay, but y is equal to 2. So what I end up getting is x plus 0y equal to 7. Okay, um, so that's the same as x equals 7. So my new system is x equal to 7 and y equal to 2. And this is actually the solution. So now I can read the solution right off. Um, so each time I sort of altered the system, it still had the same solution set. Okay, so this easy system at the end, I can see what the solution is. Okay, let's just check that we got a solution. So I'm going to take those numbers and plug them into the equations. Okay, so 7 minus 2 is equal to 5. That's good. And 2x minus 5y, so 2 times 7 minus 5 times 2 is 14 minus 10 is 4. And that's what we wanted from equation 2. So that solution satisfies both equations simultaneously. Okay, so this is how we find uh, the solution um, using a new method. So method three is called the elimination method. Okay, so what we did was we tried to eliminate um, one variable in one equation. Oops. by adding, um, or you could subtract, okay, a multiple of another equation. So here it's just the other equation, because we only have two equations. Okay, so you, you take a multiple of the other equation and you add it to the one that you want to remove a variable from. Um, and then you're going to be left with, um, and then we can solve for the remaining variable and use that to solve for the eliminated one. Uh, many people prefer substitution method uh, over the elimination method. Um, but this one's actually easier to generalize for more variables, which is what um, we're going to want to do. So what did we do when we did the elimination method? Okay, we, did, we only did actually two things, but there's three things that we can do. Okay, so the first thing that we did was we multiplied an equation. Oh, wait, this isn't the first thing that we did. This is actually the second thing we did. Multiplied an equation by a non-zero uh, constant, so number. So remember, we or, or divide. Okay, it doesn't matter, as long as you do it to the whole row. So I multiplied by 1 over negative 3 um, to get rid of the negative 3 in front of the y. Okay, another thing that we did was added or subtracted. Uh, a multiple of one equation to another. Okay, this was to remove a variable. Um, something that we didn't do, but that we could do, um, is switch the spots of the equations. Okay, so if you wanted to, for some reason, you could flip so that the, the equation that was in the bottom is now in the top, and the equation that was in the top are now in the bottom. Okay, that seems like something, why would we ever want to do that? But it turns out that sometimes we actually do want to do that. Um, so these are going to be the operations that we use in our generalized version as well, and they're the only allowable operations. So why are they allowable? Um, these operations um, do not change 
um, the solution set in any way. Okay, so the solutions, whatever they are, remain intact. Okay, now the method that we're going to be using um, to solve systems is called Gauss-Jordan elimination method. Uh, and it uses only a combination of these three operations, okay, repeatedly, um, and until we simplify until the system is obvious. So when is the system obvious? Oops. Um, if we're able to reduce to something like x equals um, a and y equals b, then we know the solution is a, b. Um, or if you have more variables, you might get a, x equals a, y equals b, z equals c, okay, something like that. This is what we call, when we get to here, we call this diagonal form. Okay, so then it's easy to read what the solution is um, because the, all the variables are sort of determined. So let's try to use um, the augmented matrix that we talked about in the last video to solve this system again. So first we, I guess I should write the system again. So it was x minus y equals 5 and 2, 2x minus 5y equals 4. Okay, so we first write this as an augmented matrix. So it's going to be 1, negative 1, and 5, and then 2, negative 5, and 4. So remember we have the x column, the y column, the equals, and the number column, and then we have the equation 1 and the equation 2. So our first step um, was to take equation 1, or sorry, equation 2, and add negative 2 of equation 1. Okay, so equation 1, remember, stayed the same. And what happened with equation 2 is we had 2, negative 5, 4. Okay, this is the old equation 2. And then we added negative 2 of equation 1. So that's negative 2, positive 2, negative 10. Okay, and what we get when we add these is our new equation 2. So we get 0, negative 3, and negative 6. So that's our new row in our matrix. Okay, now our next step was to change equation 2 by dividing it by negative 3. Okay, so here, this one maybe is a bit easier to do. So you just divide everything. Maybe I'll still do it in green. So you just divide everything by negative 3. Okay, so our new one is going to be 0, um, positive 1, and um, positive 2. So that's our new row 2. Okay, and then in our last step, we did row, or sorry, not row, equation one. Um, plus equation two. Because we saw that these things, if I add them together, are going to be zero. Okay, so that is, we had our um, old equation one. And then we want to add equation two. So we always add column wise, so I get um, 1 plus 0 is 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, 5 plus 2 is 7. So this is this was our old equation 1, equation 2 without any multiple, and this is our new equation 1. So what we're going to get is 1, 0, 7, and then 0, 1, 2. So notice that we have these ones on the diagonal. This is diagonal form. This is what it looks like in an augmented matrix. So now we just want to go back, um, return to the system of equations. Okay, so then we have to remember, okay, we had an X column, a Y column, the equals, and the numbers. And each row is a an equation. 
So our system is going to be 1x plus 0y equals 7, and then 0x plus 1y equals 2, which if I simplify that gives me x equals 7, y equals 2. And this is our solution. And it's the same as before. So um, the, the benefit of using matri matrices is that we have a bit less writing um, because we don't have to keep track of the x's and y's because we know all the x's are always in column uh, 1 and all the y's are always in column 2. And this is why it's so important that we do our operations column-wise because these are where the like terms live. Okay, so you can't... Um, you can't add different columns. You need to line them up properly because we only want to um, add like terms. So we also can't just add a number per se because then if I add like plus 2 here, this is actually an x, a 1x. So plus 2, those are not like terms. Okay, so you want to be careful, um, but we're going to encounter these problems as we, as we work through and 